So nice to be back here because I studied here from 97 until 2000 um, with the legendary Austrian cellist Heinrich Schiff, amazing musician, and wonderful cellist. And quite often as a student used to come to the music frame behind me, listening to all kinds of concerts with Vienna Philharmonic and many, many other people. Somehow with the streets, a lot of them named after composers, Brahmsplatz, Schubertstrasse, Beethovenplatz, you have a feeling that the composers are still here. Um, the city really has that sort of feeling about music. I always think that music to Vienna is almost like football to London, in the sense that music is, is the reason of Vienna, one might even say, the whole New Year's concerts, um, which of course take place in this incredible hall behind. There's a beautiful chamber hall, actually, also in the Musikverein, called the Brahmsaal, named after Brahms, of course, and really beautiful acoustic and lovely to play in, very nice. I think it was in 2005 when we first played together. We were both with the same agency in London at the time called White Cat and uh, the lady who was running the agency said she also had this wonderful cellist called Thomas Carroll on her books and that we would make a very good duo. So the first time we played together was in the Holy Well Room in Oxford on a Sunday morning and we've played many, many concerts uh, ever since. It's so funny being here at the Karlsplatz because I used to come here every afternoon in the summer months and even in spring, which of course in Vienna is lovely. It's just a great place to spend time reading, listening to music and just literally sort of spending time outside. It was really lovely. Well, being here in the Central Friedhof, the cemetery of Vienna, where these three legends are buried, Schubert to my left, Beethoven to my right, and Brahms just over there, it's incredible to think that these three musical giants are all buried here side by side. Incredible to think of the influence they've had on each other, on the classical world, the music that they've composed, and the links between them. Schubert carrying Beethoven's coffin at his funeral, the admiration Brahms had for Beethoven, with the bust of Beethoven looking down at Brahms when he was writing. And to think that they're all lying just a few meters away is, is quite extraordinary. This is Stefan Morris, one of my pupils at the Menu School, who I think I had the pleasure of teaching for about six years. And very nice to see you now studying with Heinrich Schiff in Austria, um, continuing the tradition, one might say, sort of now going to a great maestro in Vienna. Absolutely, I mean, starting with uh, maybe less of a great maestro. Absolutely. Uh, and then, and then uh, I think that's fair to say. I would say so. Um, and then moving on to the, uh, the legend. Big man himself, Absolutely. So. Yeah, um, we're sitting here in my studio in Vienna, and Vienna is obviously the center of your CD. 
were all those from Mozart to Mahler and Schoenberg. Uh, that's wonderful, mm. but I don't think in my musical language, in mm. my playing, there is a direct reflection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find it probably a question of belief, uh, of trust, of religion. Mm. If I would say, oh yes, certainly it has its effect. Mm -hmm. Would you like to say that having studied in Vienna, besides all the shift things, it has a f an effect on your Schubert, Beethoven, Brahms interpretation? Have you been here? Have you been here? Now you must say yes, because that's why we sing. <laughs> Indirectly and directly, yes. Indirectly and directly? Yes. Oh, that's very nice. Yes. So you don't have to explain what in and to No, I'll answer. leave it at that. I That's think. wonderful. <laughs> it's That's <safer>. <laughs>